There are two techniques for cannulating a fistula. One is site rotation, which is also known as rope ladder and rotating sites. The other is buttonhole, which is also known as constant site or same site cannulation. The site rotation technique involves rotating cannulation sites up and down the entire length of the fistula. Proper rotation of the needle cannulation sites moves both venous and arterial needle sites up and down the vascular axis like rungs on a ladder. Locate recent cannulation sites by looking for scab formation. In site rotation, scab areas should not be recannulated until the scab is completely healed and no longer visible. Recannulation of the fistula in the same general area is the hallmark of improper site rotation. Note the lack of spacing between these cannulation sites. This is improper for both the rope ladder and buttonhole techniques. In rope ladder, repeatedly puncturing the same general area, session after session, is known as one-sideitis. This incorrect technique can cause aneurysms and stenosis, and it should not be confused with the same site principle used for the buttonhole technique. Here is a fistula with several aneurysms. Let's walk through the steps in cannulating a mature fistula using site rotation. After you apply the tourniquet, Stabilize the skin. The three-point technique can be used to hold the skin. The thumb and forefinger of the cannulator's needle-free hand stabilize the vessel to prevent it from rolling and also serve as a guide for finding the center of the fistula. The pinky or ring finger of the needle hand pulls the skin taut, which allows for easier needle insertion and help reduce pain. When you pull the skin taut, you are compressing nerve endings, which interrupt the pain to brain sensation for up to 20 seconds. That's plenty of time for needle placement. Another technique you can use is the L technique. Hold the thumb and index finger like an L. The thumb holds skin taut over the fistula, and the index finger stabilizes and engorges the fistula. When you did your initial assessment, you determined the depth of the fistula. This will determine the correct angle of needle entry into the access. The rule of thumb is to use an angle of insertion of approximately 20 to 35 degrees depending on the depth of the access. Some fistulas are very shallow and a lesser angle can be used. The angle is from the skin to the needle hub. If the fistula requires a steeper angle of insertion, have the fistula evaluated by a physician. Deborah, do you want to take it from here? Thank you. You need to apply the correct amount of pressure to slowly insert the fistula needle through the skin and the subcutaneous tissue above the vessel until the needle enters the vein wall. As you insert the needle, watch for the orientation of the needle bevel and avoid turning your wrist. If the bevel enters sideways, you can cut the vessel, causing sidewall infiltration. Once the fistula is entered, watch for the blood flashback. Do not flip or rotate the bevel of the needle. Flipping the needle can cause problems. Because the needle is up to the hub in the skin, flipping can stretch the needle insertion site. Enlarging the hole causes the access to ooze blood during dialysis. Flipping can also lead to infiltration of the back wall. Flipping a needle immediately after flashback can cause coring of the access, which results in a perfectly round hole being cut out of the vessel wall. Well, once the needle is inserted properly, tape the wings to stabilize the needle. Chevron the tape to prevent the needle from dislodging. Use additional tape as needed. Remember to tape securely, not tightly. Place sterile gauze or an adhesive bandage over the insertion site or, per your clinic's practice, proceed with dialysis according to the unit protocol. Once dialysis is completed, using proper needle removal will prevent post-dialysis infiltration and bleeding. Position gauze dressing over the needle site, but do not apply pressure. Carefully remove the needle at approximately the same angle as you inserted it. This prevents dragging the needle across the patient's skin. 
Using too steep an angle during needle removal may cause the needle to puncture the vein wall. Do not apply pressure to the puncture site until the needle has been completely removed. Use two fingers to hold the gauze over the site and apply pressure. One finger applies pressure to the puncture site on the skin and the other is positioned over the puncture site in the vessel. Maintain firm but not excessive pressure to achieve hemostasis. The pulse should be palpable above and below the pressure application site. Hold continuous pressure on the sites for 10 to 12 minutes. No peaking. Today, establishing a buttonhole site involves the same clinical staff person or the patient cannulating the fistula in the exact same spot at the same angle and depth of penetration every time. A scar tissue tunnel, a track, develops allowing for the use of a buttonhole or blunt fistula needle. There are a number of advantages of using the buttonhole technique instead of rotating sites. This technique may prolong the lifespan of the fistula. In many patients, it reduces pain, so there is no need for anesthetics. And it can reduce bleeding, infiltrations, and infections. Missed cannulations are virtually eliminated. It promotes self and home dialysis, and no safety device is required on the blunt fistula needle. There are a few disadvantages to using the buttonhole technique. Initially, it requires the same cannulator, same angle of insertion, and same site location until the tunnel or track has developed. Staff and patient education to correct confusion with one site itis needs to be provided. This technique may be difficult to use with an AV fistula covered by heavily scarred skin or with a large amount of subcutaneous tissue overlying the vessel. A septic technique, including scab removal, is also critical in the buttonhole technique. When you rotate sites, you avoid scabs from previous needle insertions. With buttonhole, you must completely remove and dispose of the bacteria-laden scabs prior to cannulating the previous cannulation site. This makes it even more important to employ a strict aseptic technique and infection prevention measures. Carefully select buttonhole sites based on a complete physical assessment of the fistula. Document the findings of your assessment and review previous arterial and venous pressures at various potential cannulation sites. Select straight areas without aneurysms where you will have a minimum of one to one and a half inches between the tips of the two needles. Consider the direction of the blood flow for the placement of needles. Establish one site for the arterial needle and one site for the venous needle. To establish a buttonhole site, you're going to start by using a sharp fistula needle of the prescribed gauge. With a tourniquet in place to engorge the vessel, grasp the fistula needle wings, align the needle cannula with the bevel facing up over the cannulation site, and pull the skin taut on both sides of the cannulation site. Cannulate the site at a 20 to 35 degree angle. Self-cannulators may require a steeper angle of insertion. As we previously stated, it's crucial in developing a buttonhole track that a single cannulator perform all cannulations in the exact same site using the same insertion angle and depth of penetration each time until the site is well established. A decrease in resistance, evidenced by seeing a flashback of blood, indicates the needle is in the access. Lower the angle of insertion and advance the needle into the fistula up to the needle hub so that it is completely positioned within the vessel lumen. Assess for adequate blood flow through the needle. Finally, securely tape the fistula needle and proceed with dialysis treatment per facility protocol. Typically, it takes 6 to 10 cannulations using a sharp fistula needle to develop the track or tunnel for a buttonhole site. Patients with slower wound healing may require a few more cannulations to develop the track. Some patients have thicker vessels and need more time to develop a vessel flap. They will require more sharp needle cannulation before a track is formed. Once the initial two buttonhole sites are well established, it is recommended that you develop an alternate set of sites in a similar fashion. Here you can see two actual buttonhole sites.
Once the buttonhole cannulation tract is formed and established, you can change from sharp needles to anti-stick blunt bevel fistula needles. Blunt needles prevent potential cutting of the buttonhole tract on insertion or creation of a new entry site in the vessel. The use of blunt needles prevents infiltrations and bleeding from around the needle sites. Because the needle fits snugly in the track, trauma from the needle insertion into the track and vessel can be minimized. Here you can see the differences in sharp and blunt needles. Notice they both have back eyes. Here is a buttonhole on day 5 of cannulation of an upper arm fistula in a patient in his mid-70s. You can see a ridge is starting to develop into a hole, but this site is not quite ready for a blunt needle. This access was changed to blunt needles on day 8. Scabs that form over buttonhole cannulation sites must be removed before cannulation. The scab looks like a mushroom with a cap and stem. Scabs must be removed with strict adherence to infection control practices. Patients can soften the scab before leaving home by taping an alcohol square over scabs or applying a moist, warm washcloth. Often, scabs come off when you or your patient is washing the access. If not, stretch skin in all four directions around the scab to loosen an edge. Then remove the scab using aseptic tweezers or a sterile gauze square soaked with saline or moistened with an alcohol-based gel. Carefully remove the complete scab without harming any surrounding tissue. Anyone familiar with the buttonhole technique can cannulate an established site according to facility protocol. Disinfect the buttonhole site for cannulation. Carefully insert the needle into the track at the same angle and depth of penetration and advance the needle down the buttonhole track. A decrease in resistance, evidenced by a flashback of blood in the tubing, will indicate that the needle is in the access. Lower the angle of insertion and continue to advance the needle until it is appropriately positioned within the vessel. Assess for adequate blood flow through this needle. Securely tape the needle and proceed with the dialysis treatment. After dialysis, follow OSHA guidelines and dispose of the buttonhole needles in an approved biohazard sharps container.